my god, no, you don't understand. We have to watch a scary movie. It's Halloween, Jade, and you know, all Hallows Eve, we are not watching your weird volleyball anime on Halloween. I know, I know, but this is the first time we've gotten together for a group watch party like this, and it's one of my favourite shows. I really think you'll all like it. It's really, really fun, and uh, I don't... I don't do too well with scary movies anyway. Ugh, come on, you'll be fine. They're just movies. Live a little. I mean, I'm fine if we don't go too scary. But honestly, yeah, like, volleyball doesn't feel like the thing for tonight. Is there anything else we can watch? Maybe there's a Halloween anime we can watch? That might be a good compromise. Mm, there aren't a ton of good horror anime, but I'm sure we could find something. I brought one if people are okay with checking it out. It's from an older anime, but you can watch this movie standalone and it's pretty good. Ooh, is that Sad Bridles? Oh, so you've seen it? Yes! Wow, I, I haven't watched Sad Bridles in so long. This show is fantastic, I forgot it was still running. Can't confirm, Sad Bridles is great. Ooh, I see pumpkins on the cover. You said this is one of the movies? Yeah, it's the third movie, Halloween Crisis. That looks perfect, Valerie. I think you might have hit the stinger right on target. Yeah, I think that might just be the movie for tonight. Oh, thank you, honey. Fan support is always appreciated. High five. High five. Okay, sounds good. It's been a while since I watched it. Seemed like a good time of year for it. Let's watch. Ugh, I guess. This better not suck, y'all. Nerds. What is anime? Anime is... Welcome to Neo Cadence, a mega city with a buzzing entertainment scene. The year is 20XX, and we find ourselves in Megazone Plaza, a bustling shopping district full of establishments of all kinds and all levels of popularity. Tucked away on a less trafficked side street and behind a couple of laundromats is Siberia Records, a cozy little hole in the wall for niche music collectors. Few people in this technological digital first age bother much with vinyl or CDs or cassettes anymore. But for those who still harbor a love of slipping a record out of its sleeve or cracking open a jewel case, Siberia Records is there for them. And Siberia is also home to something else, something far more remarkable, yet even less well known. It is the base of operations for a group of people bound together by mysterious forces. They call themselves Cyber Idols, named for the phone app that brought them all together one fateful day. It was on that day that they all found the truth of what lurks beneath the surface of this city. The Pulse, a cadre of otherworldly spirits with a taste for music and human souls. They are able to travel from place to place as living sound waves and can take on any form they choose to attack their victims. They are especially drawn to the hearts of music lovers and will devour anyone whose rhythms suit their taste. And in a music-driven city like Neo Cadence, the dinner bell's ringing 24-7. The only way to fight the pulse is with powers granted through mysterious devices resembling flip phones, all pre-installed with a single, solitary app called Cyber Idol. No one quite knows who created these phones or where the text messages warning them of new threats come from. All their users know is that their powers are real, the pulse are dangerous, and this is the only way to save the hearts of music lovers throughout the city. They've learned this lesson time and time again through many exciting and harrowing adventures over the last three seasons and two movies, and they are about to learn that the threat they face becomes especially dire. 
on All Hallows Eve. <laughs> I am so proud of myself for keeping a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. That was Absolutely. Amazing. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So so we're here. We're here in our cozy little record shop, um, Siberia Records. Who all do we find there? What's the gang look like? Who who are we all? Yes. Um, hi, I'm Drac or Draconics. I use he him pronouns. I'm, I'm usually playing Jaden, but today I'm playing Azuka Okora. He's about mid to late twenties. He's formally dressed. He looks like very much like a salary man because um, he is. He's an accountant. Um, he's wearing a white dress shirt with a dark navy blue blazer over it, um, matching slacks with a tan tie, and black dress shoes. Um, he also has like a golden tie slide that matches the golden wristwatch and rings he has on his um, fingers. Despite how expensive his outfit looks, he himself seems very reserved and quiet. He's very much, I think he's in the corner of the shop right now, looking at some um, CDs of maybe, I don't know, um, some Afro beats that recently dropped on CD. Um, so I think he's in that section, just flicking through all of the options right now. Very good. Oh my God. <laughs> I love a fancy man. <laughs> Oh, and he, him pronouns, um, dark skinned, uh, just slick back hair as well. Um, oh, yes, yes. The whole shebang. Mm-hmm. Hey, my name's Liv, she, they. I am going to be playing Monroe, who uses she, her, over in like towards the side of the shop in like the Latin section, checking out the greatest hits of some, you know, late Latina star. We see Monroe, who is like, early college years she's wearing this like bright golden yellow bomber jacket and then she's got like these like shorts on and like these chunky white shoes and slung over one of her shoulders is the apron for her barista job because she's definitely like here before she has to go to work they won't miss her she's like a few minutes late and she has to check these albums out but she's got like short brown hair She's like popping gum as she's looking through everything and kind of like tapping a foot to whatever music is playing inside of the store. Um, I think every now and then she like lifts an album up and so like turns to yell at one of the other employees and just being like, you got any like more of these? Like when are like the next shipment coming in? Just making a whole lot of racket for no good reason, but she's having a great time. <laughs> Oh, and I love that this is like after like three seasons worth of anime. So like <laughs> still acting like this with the employees, even though they know perfectly well who she is. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Hey, I'm Dana Alexa. She, her. I usually play Valerie on Super Idols, but today I'll be playing Lacey. Also she, her. Lacey is early 20s. She works as a stalker in the record store. She likes music, but she doesn't know much about it. And she can usually be spotted in a crowd because she's blonde with long pigtails. And she is always wearing some combination of pink and sparkly. Uh, basically, think of uh, Elle Woods in Legally Blonde. And what was Monroe asking again? Monroe like rushes over and I if I may I think she's taller than Lacey mm -hmm. um so I think she just like pops her head on top of Lacey's from behind and like holds an album up in front of the both of them so they can both see <laughs> um, and it's just like um are you gonna be getting any more of like this in because this this right here good stuff you should listen to it Oh, um, I haven't looked at the list or, you know, our shipments come in on Wednesdays and I haven't looked at what we've ordered, but we could, I could see if we can order more. Please, pretty, 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 please. Of course. Well, at least you're the best. Um, and Aww. pats your head and then like rushes off to go. Probably bother Okoro, let's be, <laughs> like, <laughs> just bother him. <laughs> so, hello, I'm Luca, he, they. I usually play Queen Bee, but tonight I'll be playing Cole. Cole is the owner of the store. He uses he, him pronouns. He's been 37 for a few years now. <laughs> he's not a tall guy, but he's pretty big. He's got beefy arms, a bit of a belly. 
large motorhead mustache and dark unkempt hair. He wears uh, cargo shorts, a uh, de rosa t-shirt with a stylized uh, round uh, devil face, and uh, then invest with way too many patches. He's currently just sprawled back uh, behind the counter on old chair trying to make sense of a bunch of orders he has written on scrap of papers he had on hand over the week. Ah yes, I know exactly this person. <laughs> this is a very clear picture. My name is Tia, use they them pronouns, and I normally play Evangeline Blake or Angie. And uh, today I'm playing Bibi, who also uses they them pronouns. Um, Bibi's the teenager of the group and uh, they're the goths. So they have short hair with like the long bangs, dyed teal, and they go down to their chin and then also have bangs. I don't know how people have this much hair, but they do for some reason. They rip jeans with fishnets underneath and a black crop top with a wide open neck that falls off of one shoulder. And there's also fishnet arm sleeves that go up past their knuckles and then their fingers kind of peek out. And then typical goth teenage makeup, so like black eyeshadow and dark lipstick. Um, they have a few piercings in both ears and in their eyebrow and in their bottom lip. And they're always wearing like really big headphones. They're standing at the cashier desk and the phone, um, they kind of just ignore Monroe's, <laughs> uh, Monroe's inquiries. Um, and I think at this point, Monroe's probably pretty used to it. But the phone does ring and they stop from typing on their actual phone to answer the phone and they say, Thank you for calling Siberia Records. My name is Bibi. How can we expand your musical universe today? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if you've got any, uh, Springsteen in stock? No, and then they hang up. <laughs> cool, not approvingly. Perfect. Also, just, it must be said, this is not a persona inspired game without somebody having headphones so i appreciate oh absolutely <laughs> yeah. oh, yes yes yeah and today as as most days it's just y'all in the shop it's not a highly trafficked store again it's in kind of like a less popular area of the megazone plaza and it's a niche type of store to begin with so you're kind of used to having the store all to yourselves and just hanging out and browsing as you please but on this fine Halloween afternoon, by the way, um, it is Halloween in Neo Cadence and the entire Megazone Plaza is done up um, in a lot of orange and black and general spoopy decorations of all sorts. Um, sort of actually how how done up for the season do you think the store is? I mean, I don't think Hall would be any good at carving a pumpkin. Like there's probably one that is really badly done at that. He made one eye bigger than the other and then gave up halfway through the mouth. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, but uh, he put up a couple death metal posters. That counts. That's in the spirit. In true, like, I'm working on the holidays and I have a customer service job, so I'm going to be half dressed up. Um, I think Monroe is wearing cat ears and has done her makeup to, like, <laughs> have cat whiskers and stuff, but is still wholeheartedly just in, like, standard civilian clothing. <laughs> I think Azuka probably has a special tie. I think I said he had a tan tie. That's what he usually wears. I think he has a tie with like cobwebs on it. They have to dress up for work today and that was the best he was willing to do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Maybe it's like the exact same color as usual, but just with the faint like, yeah. cobwebby linings. Like you have to squint. You have to really squint to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Monroe like tugs on a little bit. It's like, ooh, that's fun. And then like buzzes off somewhere. <laughs> There's a few like skulls with candles in them, but they're like the fake candles that just have the electric <laughs> light because they weren't allowed to bring in the real candles. <laughs> yeah. The, the fire code people have already been on their butts before about that. Yeah, I told you, you, you can just take the batteries off the smoke detector. I don't care. Yeah, but like the security got super weird about it last time, so this'll do, I guess. Well, do you know who ordered the electronic bossa nova? The name is Majd. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. No, it's just, it's like, uh, this taco sauce. Yeah, that, that totally sucks. No, no, that's a clue, that's a clue. No, I, I think, I think that was, I think that was Marty, you know, he usually comes in on Saturdays, but I think he was here on Thursday, I think he was just in the area and he was getting lunch, that was probably why he had, had tacos, you know? Good job. Yeah, you know, I he wasn't really looking for to to order anything, but th- thought that you know it sounded like he was really into the electronic stuff. And I know I saw the electric bossa nova on our order list, and so I thought maybe that was something that he would like. Well, oh, that that's great. Okay, so Marty, oh, my pencil, I mean, thank you for calling siberia records my name is bb how can we expand your musical universe today oh sorry i think i meant to call um cyber hair salon um sorry and they hang up (laughs) and uh, they just leave the phone off the hook and stand in front of it while they type on their phone so that cole doesn't notice There is one major bit of Halloweeniness going on nearby that is fairly hard to ignore. A new place set up shop nearby to Siberia recently called Spectre Halloween, and they have been bustling with a lot of activity, especially because, well, today is the day, so people are going to be buying their last minute costumes and decorations and whatnot. You've had a couple more drop-ins for that reason over the last few days, but now that it's the day of and most people have their stuff already, that's starting to die off a little bit. But from the front window, you can see somebody wandering in from the direction of the Spectre Halloween and the bell on the door rings. And you see a 16 year old girl, she's just kind of like a normal looking teenager, like brunette, kind of long ponytail over one shoulder. She's got, again, like, um, like an apron type thing on it and she or the apron actually says Spectre Halloween on the front but you can tell that underneath that she's wearing a band t-shirt that says like Midnight Crisis and she's got wristbands and like some makeup that would suggest that she's like into kind of like rock or metal type music and she looks very very sullen teenager as she walks through the front door Hi, welcome to Siberia Records. How can we expand your musical universe today? Uh, um, hi. Um, I guess. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit out of it today. Um, I guess. Do you have any Midnight Crisis? I think they have like a new single coming out like pretty soon. Like, do you, are you, do you have pre-orders on for it yet? Or? Uh, you know, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, Monroe? Do you know, have you heard about the, like, like, I think she's just like nearby and Lacey turns like, have you heard about that? I'm, you know, I'm going to check with BB, but, um, um, let's see. Midnight crisis, midnight crisis. Yeah. You should probably check with BB because like, she'll know if you guys have ordered it yet. Okay. But I don't think it's out. She turns to BB and you can see her face light up a little bit because BB looks kind of more in her fashion style and she seems like she's happy to see someone closer to her age, closer to her preferred like style. <laughs> and she, like she doesn't smile but she she nods knowingly in BB's direction and asks them like, "Yeah, um I, I guess yeah, do you know anything about the the new Midnight Crisis release? Do you do you listen to them?" Only that they're posers and they don't even look up from their phones. <laughs> she looks crestfallen. <laughs> Reach. <laughs> kind of picks herself up and is like, oh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, like, I kind of like them. I'm, I'm trying to like, I, I like other groups, too. Um, I guess I still kind of like them a bit. But, you know, like, um, I'm just I'm still curious about what they're what they're doing. You know, um, so, so anyway, um, like, what do you what do you think is cool? And BB's also wearing, like, the band (laughs) t-shirt, even as they say that they're posers. (laughs) Oh, you know, like, Hexmagon Void and Death Scream, I like, Uh really good or whatever. Uh Uh-huh. And you can see um, her, like, not so subtly pulling out her phone and tapping the names of these bands into the phone. Do you want to pre-order the new single? Uh, you know, yeah, like, I'm gonna, I'm pre-ordering some stuff anyway, I might as well, like, uh, pick up a, a few things at the same time, you know? Like, um, that would be great. Uh, thank you for your, um, 
I, outstanding customer service. God, I wish I, I wish I had that in me today. Ugh. Yeah, no problem. And then they pull up. I guess it's probably like an older register computer stock system, but then they just start typing like super fast all of a sudden. <laughs> and then uh, they just start asking. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember who the the person is, but like their name and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she hadn't given her name yet. Uh, but when you ask her name and get her information, uh, she tells you her name is Marlena Blanche. And you recognize the last name because if you've been paying attention to the person who set up the Spectre Halloween next door, the person who set that place up is named uh, Loretta Blanche. So you would gather that this is the daughter of the owner of the Spectre Halloween. Cool. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't think BB specifically cares. <laughs> <laughs> Azuka might be coming at this point with his the CD he's chosen and over here um, this person's name and as he's coming with a CD by um, Tiwa Alade kind of places on the counter in front of Bibi um, you're Loretta's daughter? Uh, yeah um, unfortunately yep that's me Marlena unfortunately? Uh, I, sorry I don't know if you're like a friend of my mom's or whatever but like god I just oh I really, uh, I really wish I didn't have to work today. God, ah, uh, it's Halloween. Like, she, she could ask for help on any other day of the year. Yeah, that's like super cruel of her. It's literally the best holiday of the year. I know, right? God. Man, that sucks. Oh, she's being such a mom about it. Like, I, I get it's Halloween. It's the, 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 that's what the story is. But like, people have got all their stuff already. Nobody needs their like. Why can't I? Duh! I want to go out and like see my friends. And like, Midnight Crisis is having like a show downtown, and I want to go. And she says uh, it's gonna be like, she says it's gonna be too late. And there's weirdos out on Halloween. And like, huh? It's so unfair. Come on, there's weirdos out every day. Wait, there's a concert That's tonight? That's a good thing about this town. Yes, yeah, so and you know about that, Monroe. Everyone was talking about it in my office. You should, like, totally sneak out. I wish I could. Oh, I, I really wish I could. Oh, I, I wonder if I can. I don't even know. I, uh, I haven't tried much before. If you look over, you see Monroe has pulled out her phone and is like, yeah, um, I'm not going to be able to make it into work today and, like, walks off down one of the aisles <laughs> to call it <laughs> As Monroe's walking away, Lacey turns back to the others and says, oh, I hope she's feeling okay. Like, uh, my mom? Or? Um, <laughs> no, Mon Lacey. Monroe, she's, call she's, Lacey, she's um, calling. I think Monroe's perfectly fine. You, you don't need to worry about that. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Anyway, the shackles of parental oppression will never end unless you end them. Okay, that was... Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you know you're, well, and then, then she kind of realizes that she's like talking in front of someone who might be like her mom's friend and might talk, might tell her mom. And <laughs> <laughs> then she's like, um, that sounds great in theory. Um, I guess I, I still, oh, I can't really, but that would uh, be cool in theory. <laughs> Listen, kids, you only get to be a kid once. Skip up wherever you can now, because once you're an adult, you won't be able to. And he just places the money down for the CD. He just bought and walks back to the rest of the aisle because I think he caught a glimpse of something else he might want. <laughs> and Marlena, despite her like jaded teenage exterior, can't help but betray like a sparkle in her eyes like, cool adults. <laughs> Honestly, you can slack off even when you're an adult. It just depends on how you decide to handle your life, the choices you make, but this is the best time to do it. Get out there, have fun. I've got an idea. Oh? What if you say you're coming to my house to watch scary movies or whatever, your new friend, and then just give them Cole's number and Cole will cover for us and we'll just go to the concert. You mean, you, you would go well, with me? Yeah, sure, I guess. Oh. Seems like... It's not normally my thing because, you know, they're total posers, but yeah, yeah, yeah I guess I'd go. We, we've got to go and, and make sure that they still are, of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I'll do you one better. 
I can say uh, I need you to help me set up a Halloween thing. So it counts like you're working. This is my work. This is my work. Aw, oh, it sounds like you've solved your midnight crisis. And she cringes like, thank and, you. And uh, <laughs> BB just gives Lazy a flat look. <laughs> <laughs> she just smiles and waves at them. Much like the opposite of Drac, my instinct when I hear a pun is to be delighted, but um, this character I don't <laughs> think would be. <laughs> <laughs> but very fair. My instinct is to be hurt, but I think um, Azuko could find that funny, actually, and chuckle under his breath. As everybody's chuckling and laughing, Monroe comes strutting back down from one of the aisles and just like, okay, got the night off, let's go. So you all are going to escort the 16-year-old girl to a rock concert that her mom doesn't want her to go to. This is great. I well, think she's can, still can I... going to be chaperoned. I'm an exactly. adult. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're doing girls' work. They're doing the responsible thing. <laughs> I think um, during the Halloween party, um, uh, what's his name? Fucking Azuka. I can't remember my own character's name. Uh, the <laughs> Halloween party, Azuka just went, came back from like the little office party. I think one of his co workers invited him to this concert. So that's why he knows about it. So he was heading in this direction anyway. <laughs> so he's like, um, yeah, no, Midnight um, Crisis is performing today. I actually have, I actually have tickets. A friend of mine um, invited me and I couldn't say no. Um, they didn't let me say no. So I'm heading in that direction anyway. Do you, do you need a ride? Yeah, no, that would be that would be great if, if yeah, if you're all th that would be super cool of all of you. Yeah, no, again, like the, these guys are like total posers or um, whatever, but um, everybody else seems to like them and it would be very cool of, of me to, to be there and, and hear and be up on what everybody else likes. Yeah, and there might be like a cool opening band too or whatever, so. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe Hexa, Hexamagon, was it? I forgot the name, I just made it up on the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll be there too. Hey, I just need to, I need to ask you a question. Do you enjoy this band? Yes or no? I'm, I mean, they're okay, yeah then you shouldn't care about whether or not other people like it or not. Yeah, listen to the square. Marlena's blushing, like, embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. I don't know anything about music, but everyone's super nice to me. Well, I guess that's probably because you're a super nice person, it seems like. Aw, thank you. It's really important to just like what you like. Like, honestly, who cares? And there's always, like, new and exciting things to learn. Um, like BB's totally right. The best way to find a new group is to listen to the openers because I mean, you can go and like deep dive and then you find a whole bunch of stuff. It's like having your life on shuffle all the time. Okay. All right. Well, okay. I guess I'll, I'll, um, I'll go tell my mom, I guess. Well, I have to finish out shift at the Halloween store first. Um, but I guess after I'm done, um, I have a reason to go somewhere that she would approve of and yeah that sounds great um i guess i'll i'll see you all um later i get off at like uh at like seven hmm. all right see you then see you then awesome all right um and marlena like lets herself smile a little bit more um as she leaves and says goodbye for the record Lacey's costume is um she's just wearing like pink shirt and jacket and pants but she is also wearing pink cat ears and and has uh whiskers painted on her face oh <laughs> monroe oh and God, lacy are cat buddies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah perfect and i guess just cole and bb are just perpetually <laughs> halloween-ish the way that they dress halloween is a way of life i mean i i could there's an old witch hat on a shelf, I could grab that. <laughs> it's like the same one he wears every year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's covered in a layer of dust because that's literally the only time it gets used every year. <laughs> it's got actual cobwebs. Yeah. The real deal. It's part of the aesthetic. It just sits on the shelf next to the St. Patrick's Day hat and the New Year's hat. Oh, <laughs> the Easter hat. And the lampshade. <laughs> Perfect. 
right, so I think the rest of the time that you have until you've agreed to meet Marlena goes about the same as usual, nothing too out of the ordinary. You meet her at the time that you said, and you give her a ride. Are you all traveling in one vehicle? Like, who's got a vehicle? What kind of vehicle is it? I'm curious. Do you have, like, a, a Cybermobile or Scooby truck or whatever it is? Oh, boy. <laughs> we have um, to have, like, an old, like, beat-up roadie oh. van, right? Yeah. They're yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think Azuka refuses to drive in it. I think he brings, he always takes his own car wherever we're going. <laughs> and uh, he already offered to drive the teenagers. So I think BB would just sit in like Azuko's, I don't know, Honda Civic or whatever. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> like a <laughs> Honda Civic 20XX. <laughs> yeah. Guess. The second. Monroe jumps into the front seat and grabs the ox immediately. <laughs> he immediately just he just uh, sighs and does, I think at this point he just allows it to happen. There was definitely a point where he would like there'd be an, a small argument and she would always win, but he just gives us before, before the fight happens. <laughs> Can you put on Midnight Crisis? You know, since we're going to the concert. Yeah, why not? Oh, Azuka, thank you again for driving. I mean, I, we could use my van, but like, my car freshener expires, so it's not safe to drive. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. You know, it's, it's fine. Um, I was heading in this direction anyway, so it's not it's no skin off my nose. <laughs> That's so, really nice of you. Thank you. Sweet. So are all six of you piling into this Honda Civic? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. The sense I get is that he agreed to take Marlena and then everyone else just got in without asking yeah. or yeah. coordinating. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. I, I think Cole is sitting on someone's lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's sitting on BB's lap. Yes. They don't even um, notice they're typing on their phone and their headphones are up, even though they asked <laughs> to play music. <laughs> yeah, this is a, it's a great like anime shot with like everybody like squeezed into the one tiny area. <laughs> but yeah, since BB asked, like Monroe um, turns back and winks at them. And it's just like for you, BB, anything, um, <laughs> and starts playing Midnight Crisis as nice. loud. Oh as God! Possible. <laughs> I want to blow out this man's speakers. Um, yes. BB takes their headphones down so they can listen. They are a rock band. The reason they might be called Posers maybe is that they have maybe more of a pop electronic sound to their rock sound, conveniently in the musical style similar to games like um, The World Ends With You and Persona. Um, but <laughs> yes, uh, that's basically how they sound. I can't remember. He really enjoys this. Like as he's driving, he just turns to Monroe and uh, to everyone as well. And like, do you really enjoy this kind of music? What's wrong with that? It's, it's nothing. I do understand why some people might consider them poses. Mm -mm -mm, it's not nice to judge other people's music taste. I'm it really just isn't. saying it doesn't match mine. What do you What do you like to listen to? At the moment he's asked that. Um, he, it's <laughs> almost like he was waiting for someone to ask that. Um, immediately unplugs um, Monroe's phone, unplugs his in, and he's just, just hey. booty shaking Afrobeats, you know? Like, you know? It's just, if he was not sitting down, you're pretty sure he'd be throwing his ass around on a surf right now, but he can't. That's, un that's not a safe way to drive. So, but, and it's, it's a complete opposite to what he looks like because he's still in his business so he's still very much um, all put together but the music does not convey that at all <laughs> and he's kind of like he's kind of bobbing his head to it like he's listening to classical music so like it doesn't even really match the rhythm of it all <laughs> but he's just it's like it's, it's soothing to him little like minorly conducting with a finger or something yeah like kind of conducting like <laughs> tapping the wheel with one of his fingers to the beat of the music nice this is music. It, it's pretty cool. Like, it's chill. Yeah. And like, BB doesn't have their headphones on, so that's like the best compliment that you can get. <laughs> <laughs> Alternatively, Monroe went from like, hey, from t uh, forgetting her phone unplugged to just like hands up in the air, like 
bobbing up and down, like rocking her body to music. <laughs> is there a sunroof? <laughs> no. No, she is not. No. <laughs> she doesn't get no. paid enough for that. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, I think Marlena actually repeats this with the other people in the car. I think she wants to know what everybody listens to. <laughs> and gets people to pass the ox cord around the car. Ooh, yeah. So, like, without going into a scene for everybody, uh, what, what music genre do you think your character most likes to listen to? What, what would you play? Lacey definitely just has, like, top ten pop playlist. As, as expected, but also, like, as perfect. Yeah, to everyone's eye rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Monroe does not eye roll. Monroe sings whatever like pop song, like Good. goes full like party in the USA type vibe of just like screaming the song with you. Good. Good. Perfect. <laughs> um, when it's Monroe's turn, she puts on some sort of like Spanish, like reggaeton kind of situation. Um, a similar vibe to the Afro beats, because like it is music you want to dance to, but definitely with a more like Spanish flair. You know, it's a Zeus bobbing his head to this. <laughs> He's about it. Yeah, I think I think Marle Marlena's really digging it as well. She's digging everybody's music so far, although for certain tracks, again, she is like kind of pretending a bit that she's not as much as she is like for Lacey's tracks. <laughs> Man, downtown is kind of far away like... from Megazone Plaza, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, Azuka definitely gives Monroe like a, a slight nod of approval when her music starts playing as well. It's like, okay, okay. I think BB leans towards like rock industrial kind of sound, maybe more on the electronic side, like Dance with the Dead, who have this whole new wave, but also guitar type sound. That, I think, is probably what Marlena's grooving to the most, because she really does, like, rock and and such, but... Yeah. She just has wider taste than she lets on. Cole can ruin everybody's night with some uh, early 2000 uh, Italian punk. Uh, like, <laughs> it's just uh, incomprehensible screaming that somehow sounds sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> this is their first lineup. This is before they sold out. Oh, oh yeah, I, I can I can tell they're they're very not selling out. Barely any disc at all. Yeah. Cool. I love this album. Yeah, this is a bootleg. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Baby's definitely been converted um, to Italian punk from hanging <laughs> out with Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been three seasons. You've had lots and lots of character development and time to get to, mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. him. Three seasons in a movie. The theater release was one of the movies as well. So that was pretty, that was a pretty intense one. I remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cole's basically BB's father figure. Their parents <laughs> never show up in the series for some reason, even though they have parents and they probably have like a wholesome <laughs> home life. It's Aww. just, they're Aww. never there, but Cole's the main father figure. Mm. I think at some point during this, um, Lacey's going, now, is this a punk rock or alternative rock or alternative punk or rock alternative? I can, I can, is, is this, is this indie rock or? or this is alternative indie punk with some ska influences. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Love a ska. Oh, ska. Oh, okay, okay. Marlena nods enthusiastically. Yeah, yeah, you, you can hear it in the... I think there, there's a trumpet in there somewhere? Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah wow. I think they might be blowing into the wrong end of it, but I think it, I think I hear it. See, that's, that's their experimental phase. Got it, got it, okay. I'm, I'm learning things. Okay, cool, cool. It's all about, like, breaking the norms, so you don't always play the trumpet, you know, from the one end. There's just, like, so many options, you know? Okay. All right. Wow. Cool. All right. And I think <laughs> your ride probably <laughs> winds to an end after the last couple <laughs> tracks finish. Um, you reach the 
you reach the downtown area where there's clearly this big music event going on. Um, I think it's it's a big, it's a really t- a quite big like music festival type event. So there's multiple stages going on and there's like food vendors. Obviously there's people in costumes, there's decorations everywhere and like jack-o'-lantern lights and strings up along the lampposts. And since it's a futuristic city, there's a bunch of like big Blade Runner style uh, projections on the sides of buildings with uh, with Halloween art and promotions for various idols and whatnot. And there's definitely going to be a stage further in to the venue where Midnight Crisis will be performing eventually, but right now is in fact being used by Hexamagon <laughs> as they perform one of their opening numbers. BB walks like right to the stage and somehow people part ways so that BB gets to the front. (laughs) As you walk through the crowd, you start getting a few weird feelings, not anything specific yet, but you can feel like that faint spidey sense on the back of all your necks that you're familiar with at this point. Um, They're not pointing in any specific direction, but you know that there's something in the air here that's not quite right. I think all of our eyes like meet in that moment then, like we all know. It's like that, you know, that anime shot where it's just a cut of all of us stopping to look at each other. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Of course, Marlena's completely oblivious. Um, She's just happy to be here. She's at one of the food stalls. She's getting some nice, like, orange and black cotton candy. (laughs) Oh, Cole taps on uh, Lacey's shoulder. Hey, hey, Lacey. I left my money in the register. Can can you spot me just till next week? Oh yeah, of course. So sweet, I I want to get uh, an elephant here. You want something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll have a Fanta. Azuka is going to be like, just whisper so only we can hear. It's been like, you all thought that, right? Yeah, something's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've been eating the energy. Yeah, and, and sure enough, as you gather together in this in this one spot, kind of away from Marlena, um, the phones in your pockets, not your regular phones, but your special phones, buzz, and you're getting an incoming text message. Oh, no. I look at my flip phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all um, yeah. take them out and look. Yeah. All at the same time, it's all for whipping out at the same time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's another mm-hmm. split shot of all of us doing it. <laughs> And the message just says, you feel it too. They are gathering. Be on the lookout for the violet. The violet? The violet. The violet. Weird. It's a good band name. And then uh, BB just like pulls out their other phones so that they can make note of the violet under the possible band names list that they have. <laughs> And your phones very quietly like glow with like an energy like they're preparing, but they're they're not like in full on power mode yet. Hmm. Well, maybe we should do like a parole check or something. Yeah, and I think I should get a beer too. Can you get me a beer, Cole? Sure. Thanks. So, Lacey, uh, I will get two paychecks next week. Okay, yeah, I'll go with you. We can carry the drinks back and keep keep an eye out for the violet. Okay, ice peeled. Right. I'm going to patrol a bit as well. I'm meant to be meeting a co-worker here, so... You know what? Yes, it's better to keep an eye on you. Monroe gets this big, excited look and just, wait a minute, we could meet one of your co-workers? <laughs> oh, okay, I, I regret Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> and she like grabs onto Azuka's arm and says like, okay guys, text us if you need us. We're gonna go do like a patrol and go meet Azuka's friends. Bye. Okay. And pull- <laughs> <laughs> As he's getting dragged away, kind of looks behind him. We just like the first proper emotion you see on his face is like a please help kind of look. I just get him pulled away. Yeah. And all he sees is BB staring flatly back at him, <laughs> watching him walk away. <laughs> Cole's giving him finger guns. 
All of you are the most irresponsible team I've ever worked with. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you're starting an investigation of the area. So uh, I guess yeah. are you, you're all splitting up to do this or like... It seems like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or like breaking yeah. off into teams. I think um, mm-hmm. BB's probably staying at the front near um, Marlena, is the name? Yeah, I was thinking yeah. somebody should stay with her. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, because you can already tell that she's starting to wander around and get like interested in various things around. Yeah, exactly. So BB's sticking with her, and uh, they've got the flip phone in their hand open, just waiting for the next move. All right. <laughs> Since you're keeping an eye out for something, you're going to roll with your current heart rate of five. Um, and since this is something you're pretty used to doing, I'm only going to require you to hit one success to detect something out of the ordinary. Okay. All right, so BB got one success, so that is a match to the target hit, so that is a success. Give me a little flavor in how you're looking around the area and keeping track of Marlena. Oh, I will also say that you got one, one, which means your heart rate goes down by one, if I remember. Oh, yes, that's true, that's yes. That's how it works. Yeah. So I'll put my heart rate down to four out of 10. And BB, I would say, is maybe tapping into their pulse power a little bit in that it might not be visible to people who don't have a pulse power, but the rest of the party would probably see like the kind of purple digital goggles over their eyes. And it's like there's a bunch of text going up and down and you don't know how they can read all of that so quickly, but they're just using it to look around and to keep an eye out. Perfect. Okay, so I think as you're using this to look around, you definitely spot something that is also purple, matching the message that you got to look out for the violet. Um, You see a flash of purple glow in the crowd, a little like further out, closer to the edges of the event. It looks like it's fairly low to the ground. Like whatever it is, it, it seems like a fairly small being, but it definitely has some kind of like violet energy glow to it and it's moving fairly quickly and actually it seems like it's something that marlena spots as well like maybe she can't see it glow but whatever it is it catches her eye and she looks at it kind of curiously and starts walking in its direction i'd say bb grabs her arm don't go near it it's like super evil and stuff what oh oh i like wait what what was I? I feel like I just snapped out of it for a sec. Uh, maybe just stay here and have some cotton candy for a bit. I'll be right back. Uh, okay. Yeah, and you get her to sit down on a bench with her cotton candy. Small mechanical note. If you succeed on a roll, you you can also shift your own heart rate up or down by one beat. Oh, so in addition to the one. <laughs> yeah, you can shift it back up to where it was. Okay. So it just evens out. Mm-hmm. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think the thing where if you reach zero, if you go less than zero or more than 10, they're both bad things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to keep it somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. high enough to get decent successes on your rolls. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so you're you're going to to go investigate this... um, this glowing energy that's kind of near the edges of the event. It's kind of moving into like a nearby alleyway at this point. Are you taking anyone else with you or are you going by yourself? Um, I would probably tell everyone um, that they see something over there and I'm not sure how they would say that. Maybe just say purple glow, 10 o'clock, heading over to check it out in a way that like only the team members can hear because there's probably like you know, a pulse way to do it. I don't know. Yeah, they probably have like <laughs> uh, like cyber idol telepathy or whatever it is, which is convenient for the animators because it means they don't have to animate the lip flaps when the characters talk. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you gather everybody together and you're heading towards this alleyway. You've got a beat on this energy. You can tell it's still kind of down through this alley street and you can feel that there's a bit more of this energy further down the street. Like there might be more of these beings further in. Um, I think BB hangs back and just gets the phone ready to summon. I'm probably going to lean into this uh, Oracle tribute thing and just say that they're going to have like, a, I don't know, floaty digital stuff that they sit in where they get information and maybe provide backup. <laughs> sure. 
Um, I'm also going to say as a general note, before you get into any major pulse-based confrontations, the way that the Cyber Idols app works is when you like fully summon the power of the Cyber Idols app, you can actually create um, a small pocket dimension around you and whatever pulse that you're fighting that takes you into kind of an in-between space that's sort of laid on top of the regular world. So nobody can see you fighting the pulse and the pulse won't hurt regular people while they're in this pocket dimension. But if they beat you or they break out of the pocket dimension, then it's bad news. Basically just a way to have the like dark dimension type aspect of this whole setup. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking like um, the series X where they just kind of have like magical walls and they can just destroy whatever is inside. That's exactly what I'm thinking of actually. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Or to go go even like further back with it, like like a reboot cube. So wait, did we all like congregate? We all met back up together at this alleyway, right? Yes, I think you've all met up at the the entrance to this alleyway and you're starting to head in there. Okay. And BB's got their monitoring power thingamabobs up in the air with them. Before we go into the alley, can I roll to see if we managed to get our food before we got called by BB? (laughs) (laughs) Sure, I'll make that again a one success required. Oh, yes. Three successes, nice. This uh, target exceeds the the target by two or more. It is an exceed. Yes. So how do you go above and beyond getting your food before the fight? I think they were calling out like a big order for somebody else and I just swooped in. <laughs> oh my god. Hon- honest mistake, honest mistake. But uh, does anybody want fries? So you can shift your heart rate up or down by one? Yeah, you can shift your own and it also says when you get an exceed... That player can change the heart rate of other characters in the scene by one beat per hmm. exceeding hit. Yes, so you, you have two beats you can give to other people. Azuka would be very annoyed <laughs> that I got food that wasn't mine. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'd like to raise his heartbeat. <laughs> raise my blood pressure. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, have some, fr- have some more cheesy fries. <laughs> Yeah, as you're all getting, like, ready to go into this serious, like, alley situation from off screen, you see, like, Cole's hand enter the frame with a cheesy fry in hand, like, want some? Cole, we... You do realize there are posts down this alleyway, right? We, we don't have time to eat just yet. And we did... No one ordered cheesy fries. Where did you get those from? BB just takes the cheesy fries and places them and somehow it sits perfectly fine on like whatever digital desk they have and they just start eating them <laughs> in between like they're typing and analysis. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, our, our order came up really quickly and there were also cheesy fries. That was really nice. We'll talk about this later. Um, <laughs> I'm willing to head in first. I'm in a close range fight and Monroe. Coming right behind you. All right, so I think as you head in further into the alleyway, you definitely feel like, again, there's this congregation of these small creatures. They have this, like, purple aura around them that you can see because you can see uh, the pulse better than other regular people. And you can see the form that these creatures take are, they look like they're purple cats, like, like a black cat, except well, dark purple fur, except it's just the body that looks like a cat. Their heads are these little jack-o'-lantern heads with these really menacing looking like expressions on them. They're circling and it looks like they're gathering more of them together in this one spot. Mm. It totally sounds cute, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's very like Nightmare Before Christmas, <laughs> like jack-o'-lantern heads. I mean, I'm glad they dress for the occasion. <laughs> yeah, they're more into the season than you are. That's not very hard. <laughs> and as you get closer, they notice that you're there and they all turn to face you with their, their very sinister pumpkin faces all facing you. Hmm. Monroe is gonna take out her phone on, I guess, yeah, flip open the app and like activate her powers. I guess that's how it works here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's the flavor I'm choosing. She takes out her like 
also like golden yellow flip phone flips it open activates her powers and she like takes her fists and slams them together and as she does a burst of light flashes and in that same sort of like yellow golden hue are these like glowing forms of like technological light around her knuckles and they're like big and chunky and yeah and they're glowing in like the night sweet Ooh, i love that someone else go next because i need to think about my transformation kind of sequence <laughs> yeah we may not be in magical girl mode but everybody gets transformations regardless <laughs> let's go i know what i'm doing so um he flips out his phone his um flip phone is uh also navy blue a lot like his suits but it's almost a glossy um navy blue and he flips it open and opens up the app and once he does the screen shines a bright white and he kind of reaches his hand into the phone far deeper than it should a very much a mary poppins kind of thing with a mary poppins bag and reaches in and as he pulls his arm out you see the hilt of a katana come out first and then a shiny matte black blade come out as well and the moment he pulls it out of his phone entirely and he like strikes downwards at the ground it kind of hits the ground and there's a flash of light and a wind whips up and just see newspaper pages and magazine covers just wrap around the blade of his sword and then he holds it out in front of him pointed at these cat gremlins <laughs> yeah Lacey flips open her phone and holds it up and uh, her phone actually is a forest green no I'm kidding it's pink <laughs> <laughs> I'm like wait what <laughs> the green would have clashed so badly <laughs> no she takes out her hot pink flip phone and flips it open and activates the app and then spins the phone in her hand like something you would do if your hands were free and you were feeling with something but she spins it in her hand and it turns into this blurry circle that starts to spark with pink electricity and then grabs it again and has two stun batons crackling with electricity and passes one to her other hand cool okay Coles flips out his phone flips it open is a basic uh, beat up gray raises it into the air a la full-on He-Man. There's a flash of light. For a moment behind him, we see a bunch of uh, fan art wizards in pose. Oh and God. then he's holding a big uh, bass guitar by the neck. It's uh, metallic blue and it's got an axe blade in its body. Righteous. Also, would you say that you have just summoned the power of Grey Cell? Yes, I would. Oh God. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all night. Yeah, it just hit me. (laughs) As your phone transformation and powers all finish up, you have your big purple like energy field that spreads out from around you all as you do this, creating this pocket dimension that is sort of layered in between our world and the pulse world. So you can still sort of see the outline of the world that you were just in underneath everything, um, but it looks like it's kind of in like a photo negative and the pulse look even like brighter purple in this dimension. And they are definitely, <laughs> well, they, they were aware of you and now they are coming at you. There's about, well, there I'm gonna say there is about five of them, one for each of you. They're rushing at you. Um, they've got these big, wicked-looking claws, and they're gonna start jumping at you. Who's gonna make the first move? Well, I guess to be more specific to the game's terminology, who wants to take the spotlight first? I will. All right, spotlight on Azuka. So as these creatures come towards him, at least his um, little cat gremlin that's coming um, towards him, kind of groans under his breath and just says. Let's try and get over this as quickly, please. I need to meet my co worker and get home. As soon as possible, I have a telenovela I don't want to miss. He's going to immediately unsheath his blade and just move up towards his cat gremlin and try and slash at it across the legs. And right from the get go, I'm going to use my fighting style a desire to be home by dinner. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I can get two extra dice for this. Okay. Your heart rate is six, so you get to roll six dice. And you also, because you're using an aspect of your fighting style, you get to roll with two additional dice in your pool. Yeah. So since you're only attacking one of these cat gremlins and not like a bunch of them at once, I'm going to call that a two hits. I'm going to require for that one. Okay. Fingers crossed. I'm going to be rolling eight dice. Yes. 
Oh, damn. Nice. Four successes. <laughs> Four successes. Um, and you get one, one. So that means I get to adjust a heart rate in the scene. But since you got an exceed by two, you also get to adjust some heartbeats in the scene plus your own. Okay, so I'll adjust my heartbeat and bump up by one. Okay. Um, so I'm going to bump up Monroe's heartbeat and BB's because they seem very much like a long range fighter and it seems like they're going to get up close soon. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, Monroe and BB, I'll give them a heartbeat each. Okay. And then who am I going to be mean to? Uh, I think to represent the fact that this cat is going for you, I am going to raise your heart or uh, lower your heartbeat back down by one, Azuka. Okay. So describe how you succeed at attacking this cat. You get you successfully go for the legs. You kind of see him like crouch down and just glare at the cat as coming towards them. It's almost like he's waiting for the cat to get closer. And the moment the cat is within striking distance of him, he launches himself towards the cat and slashes across the lower half of the legs and ends up on the other side of the cat. And you see the newspaper and magazine pages on his blade is kind of covered in whatever this thing bleeds. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they do bleed necessarily. I think it's more like a mist that comes out of them when you attack them. Oh, OK. So you just see that kind of same mist coming off his sword as whatever it is evaporates. And he turns around to face where everyone's coming after him again. Yeah, and I think as the cat goes by you, like as its legs start to phase out of existence, it does get you on the cheek as it sails past you, but then it again phases out of existence. All right, who wants to go next? Who wants the spotlight next? Spoiler, I'm up close and personal, so I might as well go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and roll. So I'm at six and I get two extra dice. So I'm going to be rolling with eight. Okay, three successes and a one. <laughs> All right, and you said you were rolling with one of your aspects, right? Yeah, yeah, so I rolled eight. Uh, which of your aspects were you rolling with? Oh, um, just up close and personal. Okay, perfect. So you used your up close and personal um, aspect, so you can check that yeah. off. And you also get to modify your own heart rate by one and somebody else's heart rate by one. Okay, um, I'm gonna cancel out my failure and then... I don't think you can increase anyone's heart rate right? by one because the thing to hit was two and you have to exceed by two. Oh, by um, two or more. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. Oh, okay, never mind then. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna save my own skin. Bye, everybody. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, who says that I'm going to modify your heartbeat by one? <laughs> oh, that's true. Although I probably will just to keep it simple. <laughs> so we'll keep your heartbeat at six. Awesome. So again, you're, you're going for this cat gremlin with your glowing magical brass knuckles. How does this go for you? Monroe just follows up right after, like, Azuka, like, she darts under um, his arm and, like, just goes rushing forward and slams her fist into one of the gremlins. Um, probably, honestly, kind of lets out this, like, excited cackle as, like, we're starting because, like, Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, this is her jam. I love that. Yeah, and I think as you do that, the cat gets punched and like out of its jack-o'-lantern mouth come these glowing purple darts. They come at you. Uh, I, I, this is how I'm representing me, modifying your heartbeat down, by the way, <laughs> when I do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it kind of gets you a bit with this like spray of little like purple needles, but otherwise you punch it into a fine mist. Oh, yeah. And I think some of the needles do the dramatic, like, swipe on her, the side of her face. Like, she just barely dodges. Mm -hmm. So when she's done, she'll just, like, wipes the blood off of her cheek. <laughs> All right. Who wants the next spotlight? Uh, I think Lacey is going to jump in. All right. She looks at the nearest one of these jack lantern cats and goes, I'm sorry, you look really cute, but you're also evil. And maybe before it can react disappears in sort of a bolt of pink electricity and appears right behind it and hits it with one of her stun batons and so I'm gonna mark shocking speed get plus two I like how everybody's <laughs> how everybody's using all of their aspects right now <laughs> just don't have time for this there's stuff going on you need to get yeah. back to it there's telenovelas to watch gotta use them sometime yeah I need to watch the next episode of Game of Flames this is just getting good <laughs> yeah Oof. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. This is fun. 
So you got two successes, which is a success, but you also got three ones. Mm hmm. Oh no. <laughs> Go ahead and put my heart rate up by one. Yeah, so you can raise your heart rate. And what am I gonna do? Am I gonna pile it all on you and be mean, or am I gonna spread it out? <laughs> you just raised your heartbeat to six, right? Yes. I'm actually gonna raise your heartbeat by two. Oh. And who are you most close to right now in the fray? I think I was closer to the back, but like zipped ahead. Oh, okay, so you're probably closer to BB and Cole than you are to Azuka and mm -hmm. Monroe. That's what I'm trying to determine. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna pull Cole down by one. Okay. Yeah, so I think, um, well, first describe the initial part of the success of how this goes. But something's gonna go wrong, just to FYI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like I said, Lacey like visually turns into electricity and zips behind this cat and like as it's as it looks like it's about to attack suddenly she's behind it and zaps it with one of her stun batons yeah and i think you do that you do get it um but i think this surge is stronger than you expect it to be and you do end up frying and mystifying this cat but it also like goes off surprisingly <laughs> close to Cole, like very close to actually hitting him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think your heartbeat like shoots up because you're like, oh my God, I just about killed Cole. Um, <laughs> and Cole's heartbeat goes down because you just about got hit. Mm -hmm. You know what it is, is the um, the cat is standing in like a puddle of some spilled drink. And so the whole puddle like sparks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This, this just like sparking puddle of purple goo that has like purple mist swirling above it. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, made me spill my beer. <laughs> Clearly this is gonna spur you to some kind of amazing action. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, Cole is not gonna use any of his specific powers right now. He's just gonna like whack one of those with the flat of the axe. Okay. Are you aiming to try and, like, burst it or, like, just stun it? Like, I would give a one for a stun and a two for a kill. I think I'm going to try for a kill. All right. So you can roll with five dice. And you Ooh, still got two successes. Barely. Nice. And a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you get to adjust your heart rate. Hmm. I'm going to raise it. Okay. Um, and I think I'm, I'm actually going to pull Lacey's heartbeat back down one okay. because I think... <laughs> Seeing Cole recover um, probably reassures you a bit. Okay. So now there's just the one more cat left going for BB at this point. BB, how are you dealing? Um, I'm assuming that these are just like baby bosses before we fight the big boss. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. What, you don't want to waste all of your very limited resources on these like little <laughs> small guys? Um, yeah, essentially. <laughs> So I'm just going to do a flat roll. I'm not going to add any aspects or anything. So okay. I'm just going to. <laughs> um, that's three ones and three sixes. Oh, my God. For the audience. <laughs> okay, then. Wow. Just extremes. There is no in between. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you do still get to adjust your heart rate by one. Okay. Um, I'm going to put it down to five. Oh, oh, so you're lowering yours. Yeah, because uh, if I put it up by one, that would make it seven. And if you were just like, I'm just going to make you heartbroken, I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> so fair. I was like... <laughs> Very fair. At least this way I'm safe. Yeah, yeah. It's a reasonable concern to have um, because I was considering something of the sort. Um, what did, let's see. Outsmarted. <laughs> did you describe how you're going after this cat? So um, basically, BB eats their chili fries and takes a sip of their beer and then goes back to typing super fast as this demon cat's coming towards them and outside of their digital desk thing that they're sitting in and kind of floating above the ground two like digital style guns like neon guns like i assume this is all like in a neon purple just point to the cat and uh, shoot it with neon purple lasers <laughs> kind of similar situation i think to before as you're going for this uh, cat that you do you do get it successfully so you, you do get that um but i am going to have you again almost hit one of your teammates so i'm gonna raise you by two 
and we established that you're fairly close to Lacey, um, so I'm gonna raise uh, Lacey's up by one. All oh, right. You're all in very close quarters in this alley, so it's hard to not hit each other. Oops. It's, it's okay, it's okay. And as you destroy what seems to be the last of these jack-o'-lantern cats, you hear a gasp behind you. And as you stop, you realize that there is someone that you seem to have brought into your pocket dimension with you unwittingly, who has been watching this whole time. (laughs) Hey, it's Marlena. (laughs) Oh dear. (laughs) And she looks petrified. She has no idea what she's seeing. All she knows is she sees these people that she's just met with these supernatural powers um, and she's in some kind of weird negative space and she doesn't know what's going on and she drops her cotton candy and she turns around and runs. No, no, it's cool. You're having a bad trip. It's cool. <laughs> a bad trip. She's, she's 16. It, yeah, she doesn't know what a trip looks like. She'll, be, yeah. she'll oh. believe it. Uh, I, I feel like we shouldn't be telling her that she's... she's uh, you know what, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll go get her. And Lacey super speeds after Marlena. <laughs> As Lacey is super speeding after Marlena, BB is going to try and tap into the cameras around the area to see if they can find where the big fry is. Hmm. <laughs> and I think I'll use my hacking fighting style to add to. Sure. Okay, to find the big fry, I'm gonna say that's probably gonna be a three, actually. Um, and I guess before we resolve that, do we want to resolve the super speed, or do we want to do this first? Um, I think Lacey makes sense to me. Yeah. Just go in order that they said. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'm not gonna mark anything because I've already already used the speed anyway, but I've got eight. Yeah, and I'm going to say because this is kind of a like a twisty, turny alley area that you're in um, and she already got a head start on you, I'm going to call it a two because you are still super speedy, so. All right. Jeez, okay. That's three successes. Three successes and two ones. Yes. (laughs) Uh, So shift your heart rate first. I'm going to shift mine down because I feel like I'm in the danger zone. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm going to put those two ones right back up on (laughs) you. Sorry, I'm I'm like gunning for you. Oh yeah, right no, now. that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against it. I'm just trying to play strategically. No, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, so you're running very frantically to catch up with Marlena. She has gotten like a good bit ahead of you, but you do manage to get to her eventually. You're back out near the edge of the crowd, but again, all the people are in this like photo negative mode um, and she looks freaked out by that like what the what the hell is going on um, who are all you people it's it's like uh for for those of those of you that have, have played smash it's like uh you know when when pikachu recovers and does like two or sometimes more like rapid zip zap in different directions and i see it's like following you know each corner and then appears uh in front of her no, 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 it's, it's okay, it's okay, we're the, we're the good guys, we're the good guys, those, we're just, um, there's, there's some, some bad guys around and we're, we're keeping people safe, it's fine, it's fine. What the heck, guys, what, what, what is, this is a lot, oh, oh okay. my god, it's I need okay. to sit down, I think, it's okay. oh, that's I'm fine, that's fine, you're Where's, safe. I need my inhaler, where's my inhaler? Uh. It's okay, it's okay, I, um, I dropped my Fanta, but once we're done fighting, I can get you another drink we can you know calm down and we can all have a nice time it'll be fine yeah i don't know that i can that's what the fuck man what the fuck it's okay we we do this all the time these these weird things show up they attack people we put them into an alternate dimension of negative space that nobody gets hurt and we fight them uh and then we have a good time we go out for pizza afterwards sometimes this is all this is all a Halloween prank. It's gotta be. You're all pranking me right now. Ha ha. You get to make fun of poor Marlena. Everybody does. It's okay. It's fine. Nobody is this, cares is this, about Marlena's feelings. It's. Oh, <laughs> sorry. No, we're not. I... And as she's having this freak out, you can feel more of that energy nearby and you can see 
more of these um, jack-o'-lantern cats are starting to approach the both of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's three of them approaching you. And before we proceed with the rest of this, we should probably go and quickly uh, resolve BB's action. Yeah, so basically um, BB is going to look for the source of all of these pulse cats using, I guess, the electronic cameras in the area and whatever technology that they can find. So I'm using my hacking fighting style to give myself two bonus dice for that. So that's going to give me nine dice with my heart rate. So we'll see how this goes. Ooh. Ooh, still only two. And wait, did I say that was going to be a three? Uh Uh-oh, that's not, that's a failure. Okay, so for a failure, the GM changes the target's heart rate by up to two for every one rolled in the check. Uh, the GM may be that. So again, the GM may change someone else's by one. Oh, wait a minute. This text says uh, for every one rolled in the check, the GM may change the heart rate of someone else in the scene as well. So I probably shouldn't be spending those on the person who rolled. Oh, you. It didn't sound like you were specifically like you were kind of identifying who was closest and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, no, I was using them them on other people, but it it sounds like I probably shouldn't spend them on the person who rolled the ones. Yeah, I sound getting from that, that makes sense. Okay, so what's done is done and we'll leave it at that, but I won't do that again. (laughs) Let's see, I'm going to, yeah, I'll raise your heart rate, why not? I'll raise your heartbeat, or your heart rate by two, so you'll be at nine. Me? Yes, because, uh, so you failed, so that that is the heartbeat that I get to modify in the for you for this, for the failure. Uh, and then I also get, to, you got two ones, so I get two other people whose heartbeats I get to modify. Are you talking to or consulting with anybody else while you're doing your hacking? I think uh, Bibi would have just said that they're scoping the area to try and find the Pulse Prime. I don't know what term we're using to find the... Yeah. I think that's a good name, to be honest. Post Prime. It's the game mechanics term, so but I wasn't sure like what the in-universe would be. But I think you would have learned that term from your flip phones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they basically let everyone know that that's what they're doing. And, you know, after three seasons and a movie, they would know that that yeah. would probably be the next step anyway. So it'd be shorthand and just say searching for the prime or something like that. Right. Azuko would probably be looking over their shoulder to help. You know, more eyes on a screen is always useful. All right. In that case, I'll probably, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna raise Azuka's by one and I'm gonna raise Cole's by one. I wanna get everybody's heart rate going here. Um, I'm too old for this. (laughs) Everybody's stressed out. but especially BB because it's taken longer than you would like to find this information and you're not coming up with much. Mm -hmm. It seems like wherever this big boss prime pulse is, um, that you're not finding them. Uh, You're just finding more like little blips all over the map. Mm -hmm. And like every camera has blind spots and they're just avoiding all of the cameras and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Like, you might occasionally get, like, a glance of, like, something dark moving through shadows, um, but you can't tell exactly what it is or, like, if it's just more of the little guys or not. There's one time we look at a camera footage and it's just, like, a regular cat. Like, it's not even, like, a... <laughs> <laughs> Taking like through some garbage. Cats. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody just stops for a second, like, oh, look, it's playing with a fishbone. <laughs> okay, focus. <laughs> Yeah. Focus. We probably should get going and meet back up with Lacey and Miss Blanchett. We did not plan on bringing her along with us, so we probably should protect her. Yeah, here's here's how they frame it. Like as as the hacking is has gone awry and the the group is trying to find Lacey, uh, and Lacey and uh, Marlena are getting approached by these jack o' lantern demon cats. There's a cutaway to the the real human world where the festival is still going on. And in the background of this, you can see like a a glowing purple force building in the area where you know that Lacey and Marlena are, but are not visible to anybody else. Uh Uh-oh.
Cyber Idols will be right back after these messages. Happy Halloween, all you boils, ghouls, and nocturnaries out there. <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome to our show's first ever one shot. This is our first time on the show playing a game other than masks. It's our first time playing all new characters. I, I really hope that you're enjoying the cast of Cyber Idols so far. I think the chemistry of this group hit it off immediately, and this session this session was just like electric through the whole thing. In, in more ways than one, you'll see. Um <laughs> And I'm really glad that you're getting to hear it. I would really like to do more with these characters, and so would everyone else. And so we can't wait to do another one shot in the Cyber Idols universe again in the future. And of course, part of why we can't wait is the amazing system that we're playing for it. Oh, if you've been curious about all this stuff we've been talking about so far, about heart rates and shifting heartbeats and all of and rolling all of these multiple dice, and if it sounds interesting to you, uh, the game we are running for Cyber Idols is, of course. Heartbeats in perfect sync. It is written and designed by guest and friend of the show, Nathan Blades, aka your friend and mine, Zero Degrees. And it really is a thrill to actually be able to bring a small indie RPG like this to an AP. Like, not just like, I know Masks is technically a small indie RPG, but this is like tiny, tiny game. <laughs> not very many people at, at all have ever played it. Um, and that's a real shame because it's a really, really good little game and you should absolutely consider picking it up along with any of Nathan's other games like Agents of Hue and Beyond Mars. Um, you can pick up Heartbeats in Perfect Sync on Nathan's itch.io page, sixofspades.itch.io, that's S-I-X-O-F-S-P-A-D-E-S dot itch dot I-O for as low as five dollars. Again, a small, tight little game, barely takes any time to learn. And then you are off to the races with some very cool sessions like this one. Especially, especially cool if you really enjoy the whole aesthetic of games like The World Ends With You or Persona, Kingdom Hearts, Undernight In Birth, and the, like all of those like cool like early to late 2000s uh, games with cool soundtracks and cool aesthetics and flip phones for reasons. I know not all of them have flip phones, but that's the image I hold of them in my mind, so <laughs> leave me alone. Anyway, so yeah, we, we really hope we're bringing that to life with all the, the music selections for this one so far. And uh, uh, speaking of which, I do also want to give a huge shout out this episode to our fearless editor Kathleen as well. Kathleen normally only helps out with the dialogue ed edits of our episodes and cleanup and such, which is already a lot. Like, <laughs> I don't want to downplay that because it is a lot and it helps a lot. But this month was even more so because we had both the regular episode that was due to come out last week and then there's this coming up the week right after. There's no way, even like on the, the regular way that we handle this, that I was going to be able to do both of those. So Kathleen and I ended up splitting the work between us. I handled pretty much all of episode 25, and she ended up handling just about all of this one shot, from dialogue cleanup and editing to the final creative editing and music. I only worked on like the opening and ending like bumper scenes and this middle bit. <laughs> And that is just a gargantuan effort on her part. I'm incredibly grateful that she was able to get both of these episodes out this month while still having them both be such amazing quality. Just, just holy heck, Kathleen, you're amazing. And I would expect absolutely nothing less from an alumnus of the award-winning podcast, Sword of Symphonies. <clears throat> Plug, go listen to Sword of Symphonies if you like the flow and musical stylings of this episode in any way. Anyway, last bit of business beyond that, that our actual, like, messages for this 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 90s style commercial break or whatever it is um as usual let me remind you once again that we have a patreon it is at patreon.com slash erin cerise on that patreon one dollar or more per month gets you extra audio and before and after session talk uh there isn't a ton for this session just because it's a bit of a special case but there is plenty for a bunch of the other super idols episodes in the regular series um but if you support us at the five dollar level or more you get access to uncut versions of episodes. And for this one, this one shot, it may not sound it may not sound like it, it may not look like it, based on the runtime, but this one shot ran well over, I think, three or three and a half hours even. Uh, so there was a lot that was actually cut out of this one. Kathleen, again, dude, just bringing it home with cutting out like every single bit of chaff to make like the shining perfect hole that we ended up with. <laughs> 
Um, but the one shot did run quite long and there was a lot of side banter and rules talk cut out. So if you're interested in, in kind of working through this new game and all the other kind of like side bits that didn't like directly contribute to the main story, uh, there's plenty of that for you to listen to this recording. So if you, if you pay us $5 more a month, you can get access to that and a bunch of other uncut goodies. And of course, there's also one other benefit to being a $5 supporter. You can also get your name shouted out on the podcast. And since this is a special one shot, I am actually going to read out all of our $5 patron names on this one, just to make sure no one misses out on it. So I would like to give a big thank you to Misty, Rowan B, Dog 9 Tanner S, Eric Kune, Chris T, Liv C, Hi Liv, Wolfie, The Joiner, Matthew F, Aurabolt, Icicle Prism, Rain Crystal, Pike, Lady Plague, Blake1995, Noreen, Circus, and Sensei1477. Thank you all for supporting us. Uh, and the last thing I want to tell you about before we get back into the episode proper is our customary ad for another podcast on our Be Gay Roll Dice podcasting network. This is another ad for a newer member of the network called Tales Yet Told. And I'm, I'm kind of really glad that it landed on this t- particular episode because it's a very appropriate podcast to listen to at this very spoopy time of year. They're a show that's going to be playing a bunch of different systems, but they've just started recently and they just have uh, their one campaign right now is Strangers in the Woods. And it has very, it has a very sort of like spooky kids show vibe going on, like sort of like a Gravity Falls or an Over the Garden Wall. The story itself actually starts on Halloween night with some siblings finding themselves lost in the woods, which of course is the start to many a good spoopy Halloween tale. So definitely go give Tales Yet Told a little listen for yourself. A little spooky time of year. Alright, I'm gonna finish this middle bit. We'll get back into the (laughs) Cyber Idols the Movie 3. Uh, (laughs) I I do love this conceit as well. We're definitely playing into this more if we do more of these (laughs) one-shots. So... Yes. Listen to the ad. Get back into the show. Enjoy the show. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Kendrick. I'm Gus. I'm Hilda. And I'm Marcy. And we're the cast of Tales Yet Told. An actual play podcast dedicated to telling weird and fun stories full of imagination, thoughtful characterization, and inclusivity. You should go listen to our first season, Strangers in the Wood. Where we play Babes in the Wood, an over-the-garden-wall-inspired tabletop RPG by Adam Voss. It's fun. Spooky. And full of weird characters, like Dex the diner owner, and Miss Jackson the parrot desk attendant. And with lovable player characters, like Dakota, Dorothy, and Walter the Weasel. Follow us on Twitter at Tales Yet Told for more details, and look out for new episodes every Wednesday. So go out, eat well, sleep enough, (laughs) and love yourself like we love you. So we are aware of the build-up, right? I don't know. Uh, I think the rest of the group, you're not, like, at them yet, so I don't think you see it yet, mm-hmm. but you'll probably be able to feel it the closer you get. Yeah. Um, I do know what I'm going to do next. All right. I'm actually going to use my special move, Pure Soul. Mm. You can call to an ally and they'll heal you no matter where they are. Shift their heart rate by three. Nice. Who are you calling out to? Uh, I'm gonna call out to BB. Um. Okay. I I found Marlena, but more more of these cat things. It's it's getting kind of dicey. Help. Yeah, more cats are starting to appear, and they're actually starting to like almost look like they're trying to like starting to melt together into like one larger cat. Right, and I'm going to shift BB's heart rate down by three. Oh, All right. Thank you. <laughs> I was at nine out of ten for the listeners at home. That, oh, <laughs> that, getting pretty close. Yeah. Out of character, that was why I contacted BB. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it makes uh, sense to contact you. the main communications person. That too, for sure. You know, they're the one that figures out where things are and coordinates people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess how this plays out for BB is that they're starting to type faster. Uh, screens are going faster and faster that like Azuka's having trouble keeping up with all of the information and uh, starting to sweat a little bit. And then they hear Lacey's voice and then they just take a breath and like get it together a little bit. And they touch their ear where there's a communication device probably and just says to everyone, uh, I think Lacey found the prime. Um, she is. Uh, where is Lacey? <laughs> yeah, near outside of the alleys, like a couple blocks away, near the edges of the festival area. Yeah, that's what they say to everyone. They <laughs> move very fast. Yeah, and then they. I don't know. I'm on a floaty thing, so just floats up and goes over the buildings. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn kid getting out our own. Okay. Cole is gonna get into a sprint, and I might use my uh, special power. All right. It's a stalwart Aegis. Stalwart Aegis. I'm gonna reach Lacey, and I'm going to shield her as well as I can. Ooh, okay then. And the peril is now affecting you instead. That's, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. There's a reason you're stealing out with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he is like your stalwart father figure. I mean, is he really my father figure? I don't know. I think he's more <laughs> of like an uncle to me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love him just as much as we all do. <laughs> mm. Okay. Say Remember so. that one time you saved each other's butts in I, I don't know Vegas. <laughs> uh, we don't so talk about Vegas. So one season five. We, we don't talk about Vegas. Um, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Please. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's just sometimes you know Cole gives a little too much beer to the underage teenager of the group. Any That's... amount of beer is too much beer for an underage <laughs> member of the group. I always say this, but no one ever listens. So. <laughs> anyway, so as these cats are starting to gather and meld together into this one larger, distorted looking, it doesn't look like a cat anymore almost. It looks more like an abstract purple shape with a malformed jack-o'-lantern maw at this point and the maw is starting to open and it lunges for Lacey but Cole gets there just in the nick of time as this maw starts to close around your upper arm shoulder area I'm just wondering if this is like a defend roll if if that would be I think because it is a pretty big hit and you are taking it I think you probably would need to roll to like weather this hit properly <laughs> I don't know. How does that sound to everybody? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. make, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. How many successes will I need? It's a pretty big beast, so um, I'm going to say three. Um, Before that happens, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this. It's up to you, Aaron, but I have my special move is called Cool Tactics. Oh, sure. And I can detail an elaborate trap that I left in this scene in a flashback. And uh, I have to describe how at least one of my allies assisted me. I'm oh. just wondering if I can have that move there so that they go into the trap before they um, attack Cole in a way that might help the role a little bit. Ooh, yeah, if not, just, that's okay. I can do it for the next I'm move. Trying to, I'm trying to think because that sounds awesome. I just want to make sure that like the consequence of stalwart Aegis is still like... <laughs> it says... Peril is now affecting Cole instead, uh, but I think I want to give you the opportunity to like mitigate that somehow because that's a really cool idea. I think how I'm going to interpret this is maybe the creature is going to like grab onto Cole with its big mouth, but it's just restraining Cole for now. It hasn't like bit down real hard yet, and maybe the trap goes off before harm happens. Yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense to me. Cool. Uh, so definitely you get to use your cool tactics. You don't have to roll for that, right? I It doesn't say that I have to. No, I don't yeah, think so. Yeah, so you, don't have, you can just say what you did. Okay. Um, it seems like the next technologically savvy person next to me is probably Azuka. So I would have said that 
Um, maybe when we first got there, we quickly discussed how we were going to lure this um, prime to this exact fighting spot because <laughs> there was a lot of room to fight and stuff. And um, together we set up a, a digital trap and basically all it does in this case would be restrain the prime. Yeah, like maybe you both set up the generators for whatever this trap is. Exactly. Because you said it's attracted to like the tunes and rhythms of a song. It maybe is. We had like a little trail of <laughs> a little Bluetooth headsets um, and it kind of like led to one that it seemed to be attracted to the most. And when it consumed it, the rhythm or, or whatever of the music that was playing changed drastically and it kind of um, disrupted its physical form for a bit to keep it in place um, for a moment. Oh, sure. Like, so when it crosses nice. this threshold that the sound goes off. Yeah. So you just hear a blast of Afro beats. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's one of those things where we weren't sure what it was going to do, like if it was going to damage yeah. it and stuff like that. But it was like just enough that it would keep coal safe. Yeah, like it grabs Cole for a second, maybe lifts him up, but before this creature can bite down, it shifts just enough that it hits the range of this like sound wave, and then a great shudder, almost like a glitch wave, passes through this creature as its form, like you can see it like almost desync with itself. You can see some of the mist inside as its form shifts um, and it has to like let go and back up in order to get out of that range and it lets coal drop to the ground. Oh. Nice. Okay, so I've checked off my cool tactics because I can only use it once in this session. So for some reason, that's the only trap that actually worked. <laughs> so from up hovering up above and like watching this from a vantage point, BB's got their guns ready. They kind of do like a little yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can see them. Just a little <laughs> bit of emotion. <laughs> Marlena, again, is, is still in a bad way. She's still quite scared. So as soon as Cole gets dropped and the creature backs off, she takes the opportunity to bolt off in another direction. And the creature is going to take the opportunity to go bounding after her. Oh, um, I'm going to try and stop this creature. I want to intercept them. And I think I'm going to use one of my fighting stars because you know what? Why not? Sure. And it's a living blazer. <laughs> mm -hmm. His blazer is an animated object. So he's probably rushing towards this massive cat creature. And then it suddenly just darts past him towards Marlena. He doesn't have time to like change direction quickly. So you just kind of see his blades like almost rip off him, just completely come off him and chase after this creature to wrap around and essentially become a leash and pull this cat creature back towards towards the fights, the ones that want to fight it. All right. So that's nine. I'm going to roll nine die. Um, just a big old yank of a move. <laughs> exactly. All right, and yeah. I should set a target for this too before you roll, I guess. Um, again, since it's a it's a big boy, um, it's gonna that's gonna be three. Four. Oh, nice. just enough. Just a little bit more. <laughs> so you got yourself four successes. Yeah. I'm going to raise my heartbeat. I'm on the edge. I'm living on the edge. I'm doing this. Um, All right. I'm going to raise my heartbeat by one. All right. And you got one, one in the pool. Um, I'm going to raise Lacey's heartbeat by <laughs> one. Oh, that puts Lacey at 10. And is that- Oh, no. Oh, oh. No. oh, yeah, it is when a player's heart rate goes, oh, it's above 10. Okay, so you're okay. right there oh, on the edge. You're safe. Ooh. Right Ooh, there. <laughs> but yeah, you just see his navy blue blazer just suddenly come to life and unbutton and peel off of him and wraps around this cat Gremlin's neck and then just pulls it back towards Azuka. Mm -hmm. I think you managed to do that. You get the bulk of the creature back towards you, facing all of you again. It looks mad. Bad kitty, <laughs> as he raises and points at it. But this is all very much stressing Lacey out because mm -hmm. Marlena still looks like she's she's not okay. Like Cole got hurt to block a shot from her mm -hmm. as well, so she's kind of in a bad way right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so I guess this is still kind of a combat situation. Have we? I, I guess that was a spotlight for BB and then 
Azuka. So who wants to do Spotlight next? I haven't done anything in a minute, so I can step forward and help out. Yeah. Um, I, I think I like raced over with everybody. Mm-hmm. So Azuka's like pulled our main boss in and kind of has it like restrained, right? Yeah. Or at least facing okay. you, like you've managed to redirect its attention. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm going to try to use... This is like a... It's a bit of a stretch, but that's what this game is all about. It's about creativity. Um, I'm going to try to use my endless curiosity. Ooh, sure. I mean, yes, Monroe's a little bit of a ditz, but she knows how to fight. And so she is taking a second to like breathe and focus herself and like analyze this creature the best that she can to try to find like the weakest point or like where to take the best hit like Mm. what would be the best point um the the weakest point yeah essentially hit them at and i think you've had enough time to do that because again like everybody else has been doing stuff for a bit so i think you've just had time to do that throughout the course of this scene so now you can put that to use Mm -hmm, exactly and i think like as her eyes are like narrowing um the lights that like glow off of her brass knuckles like dim kind of low and then the second that she's like ah got it they like flash and spark as she like reaches back and just boom cracks down on that one weak point all right Um, it's found I think maybe you found, like, what looks like a soft spot on a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, like, rocket yourself up with your big brass knuckle punch up to, like, Mm -hmm. near the top of its head, and you punch down on this, like, soft pumpkin spot. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I rolled, but what? I'm assuming it would have been a three? I don't know. Um... Oh, yeah. Um, so you rolled the three successes, but that is a three. Mm-hmm. Um, so you would succeed. Uh, you just wouldn't get uh, anything other than like you get to shift your heart rate. And for once, no, you didn't roll any ones. <laughs> no failures. Um, yeah, I'll shift up, um, get some more dice on the table. Mm-hmm. And also yeah. get more in sync with the other sevens in the group. Exactly. Exactly. Love yeah, that. A few of you have seven now. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, you definitely, like, rocked this uh, constantly melting and unmelting giant purple jack-o'-lantern cat. Now it's got, like, purple, like, tendrils starting to reach out of its sides, kind of like spider legs. And it's starting to, like, get bat wings on its back as well. But it's it's all just kind of very, <laughs> like, an abstract painting type thing going on. Nice. But you can tell that you definitely got it. Its head like kind of rocks down towards the ground, and like it like it bounces off the ground, and it looks disoriented for a moment there, which gives the next person an opportunity. Oh uh, yeah, Lacey is going to step up, and while everyone else is still fighting this, I'm going to try to calm Marlena down again. Yeah, and she's like dashed away at this point, so that would take you away from the combat zone. All right, I'm going to follow her. Uh, I'm going to mark my belief in my friends for a bonus Aww. because I, I know that they have this situation handled. Yeah. And you, you find Marlena. She's run off into what would be the crowd if you were still in the normal dimension. But mm-hmm. you're able to run through people the way the dimension works. So she's just been able to run through this crowd of people and is now standing at the edge of the stage where Midnight Crisis is performing in negative and their sound is like kind of distorted like you're hearing it through like a wall of water oh, hold on hold on look i know i know this is a lot but yeah no we're, shit we we've we've done this a lot and um also i don't i don't know how far the barrier goes we've we haven't really tested that but my my friends are are very good at fighting these things and keeping people safe nothing bad is going to happen to you uh, we're, how, we're, we're how, all... How do you know that? Because, because we've, we've been, we've been through this many, many times and they've, they've saved me from a lot of danger and they'll, they'll, they'll always be there to protect me and they'll, they'll be, they'll be there to protect you if you need it to. I mm, wish I could believe you. I just, I feel like nobody's ever there to be there for me at like 
school or like, I don't know. I'm not very good at making friends and mom doesn't really understand. And it's just hard for me to believe that people will be there for me, I guess. But I don't know. I, you, it's kind of easy to listen to you, I guess. I don't, you're good at this stuff. I, I guess it sounds like. I'm not as good at the fighting, but I always try to make sure that everyone gets taken care of, you know? I can get places quickly and, and keep an eye, so I just I wanted to make sure that, that you're that you're okay, because this is really scary, this is a lot to take in, and you also just have a lot that you're dealing with, I can tell. But once we found the prime pulse that's that's causing all of this and everything's safe, then, then we can just enjoy the concert and we'll, you know, we'll say that you're you're very helpful to your mom so that you don't get in trouble and maybe you can come by the record store and we can we can hang out and, and, and be friends. Mm. That sounds that sounds really nice. As you all are fighting the big cat over in the other area, as you're fighting it and it's growing all of this extra stuff and it's even starting to sprout like extra minions at this point. There start to be like these big like purple spiders that start to emerge from it and like purple like skulls as well uh, that are like surrounded by purple fire and little like scarecrow like doll creatures in purple rags and hats. And this like whole like little army of Halloween creatures is starting to manifest at this point. Um, and as they do, there is a large shadow that is starting to be cast behind the main body of this prime pulse that is starting to stretch out underneath the crowd and over back towards Lacey and Marlena. All right. Um, can I, I, I guess, roll to try to calm her down or to keep her safe from this? Yeah. Are, are you specifically trying to calm her down or keep her safe? I think there's those are two different roles. I'm, I'm trying to keep her safe from whatever is coming this way. Okay, I think this is going to be another three. Okay, since I marked belief in my friends, I'm going to take uh, two extra dice on that. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> oh my god, yeah! <laughs> so you rolled 12 dice total, you got five successes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You only got one one. <laughs> And since the target was a three, that means you got an exceed as well. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay, so first you get to modify your heart rate. So how, how do we feel about making this a little more chaotic? Ooh. Because oh. I am tempted to push my own heart rate up at this point. Are you, are you considering, like, whether it would be more fun to go heartbroken at this point? Yeah, yeah. I want to protect Marlena from whatever danger is coming, but I want to pushing myself too far and pushing myself into heartbreak. Oh my god! That good, good, like, <laughs> hurting yourself mechanically to do something cool narratively feeling. Mm -hmm. All right, and who else's um, heartbeats would you like to modify with your exceed? Um, I don't know if I can, because, uh... No one else is, is this, well, I guess, is this the same scene, I guess, is the question. It's still close enough, like, close enough? Okay. you're still in eyesight of of the group. Then I would like to push BB's heart rate up and Azuka's down by one each. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Got those sevens all around. And then I get to do one, because there is a one here as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think... <laughs> Just because I want to see this happen, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clinch it. I'm just gonna move your heartbeat up even one further. All right. So I guess that would make you a six because you heart broke before that. Mm -hmm. So you also get to add the heartbroken aspect. If a player's heart rate goes above ten or below one, they are heartbroken. The pulse infects their soul and turns them into a dark, twisted version of themselves. Uh, that also resets my heart rate to five beats and I get a new fighting style aspect that represents this terrifying new form. So I guess what am I having to fight or do that pushes me over the edge? 
Yeah, I think as this shadow is coming for the both of you, you can feel it coming for you and you can feel that it's it's big. You can feel that if it gets to the both of you, it is going to swallow you both whole. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you can see it's just about to get to Marlena first. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're fast enough that you can do a quick swivel around and fling her away from the encroaching mm -hmm. shadow. You're super fast, so you could even, like, run with her and try to outrun the shadow. Okay, um, no, no more time for pep talks. Uh, we gotta go. And I take her hand and try to zip around the edge of the shadow to the other side where the others are. Yeah, and I think you're you're able to keep it up for a while. But again, as you said earlier, you're not sure like how far the barrier extends. And as you run further, you're getting closer to the edge of where this pocket dimension is going to end. And magic is just going to get weird in that area. And you're already on the edge as it is. So that's probably what's going to push your inner power to corrupt itself. Yeah, and I think as they come around this edge, Lacey's starting to breathe harder and like her, her heart's beating out of her chest and she's saying, that's right, they always protect me because because I, I can't protect myself. I just run away and I don't know anything. And, and they, they, just, they, they just think I'm, I'm some st stupid airhead. And they always have to... They always have to... Lacey? Alright, what's happening? And you're glowing with this purple energy now. Let's go back to the rest of the group. You're still fighting this increasingly large horde of stuff. You can see Lacey and Marlena in the distance trying to outrun this shadow. I guess how is turn order working? Has everybody had a chance in the spotlight or? I think there's still one or two people uh, yeah. left. I think I was the, the last person in the spotlight. I don't think Cole actually I, got a proper spotlight. Oh, yeah. You used your I mean, special I, well, move. I, yeah, no, I, I intercepted the, the hit. Okay, yeah, we can call that your spotlight then. In that case, I think that means I get the spotlight <laughs> and I think I just used it. <laughs> Actually, I think my spotlight was advancing with Shadow, so I think, yeah, okay. we just go back to whoever wants the spotlight next to start the next round. I'll take it. All right. Okay, I'm hovering in the air. I can see the part cat, part blob on the move it's and- like uh, melting Dolly-esque Halloween nightmare. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to use my long range fighting style and I'm gonna try to shoot at it. Yeah. Um, so my heart rate is at seven right now. So that's yeah. going to give me- And you could also do a perfect sync attack with someone else who has a seven. Ooh, I have seven. Ooh, I would love I to try that. I have a seven. <laughs> yeah, we oh God, you could, do, you could do we like one big sevens. group attack. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh my gosh, let's do it. <laughs> what a coincidence, it's like- <laughs> Wow. It's almost wild. like wonder, we all planned this. <laughs> I wonder who we have to thank for that. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am sure it'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, in that case, I do want to do a sync attack. Yeah, uh, and you're, again, like the communicator, so you can coordinate this big attack. Absolutely. Okay, so here's what I do. I have my guns out and they're ready. And then um, everybody starts to see there's like points that start to be highlighted on the, um, in front of their vision, I guess, that they see of the prime and they can kind of see like little purple squares that they identify as BB's like neon purple computer stuff, identifying weaknesses that they can exploit that yeah. BB has kind of analyzed as um, they've watched it move around. So they just communicate to everyone and say, target these points and shoots and yeah, how does perfect sync work? All right, so the way that the perfect sync team attacks work is everybody with the same heart rate um, can roll with uh, whatever dice pool they're working with. Um, and you're free to also invoke your aspects for this roll so you can add even more dice to it. Um, and everybody combines their dice pool into one massive dice pool. 
Um, you know what, let's go all in. I'll add four extra dice and use precision as well as long range, because I'm... Whoa! Oh, damn. So that's going to be 11 dice from BB. Perfect, and I'm putting in nine dice, because I'm going to use my mini disc shuriken. Yeah. Um, I'm fired up. I'm going to use that fiery passion, so you got nine from me. Nice. Um... Well, Tars, I need moderate effort. I just use moderate effort, so I'm not going to use my ability because <laughs> I have one left. I'm saving that for the big bad. Sure. Um, and yeah, I'll use seven. Okay. I'm assuming this is the big bad. I thought it was. I should have been. I should have been adding this together. So that was sorry. Eleven plus. <laughs> eleven plus. What is it? Two sets of nine. And then seven from Azuka. Yeah. So. Th- 36 dice total, I think. <laughs> okay. Just re add that, make sure. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Cool, cool. Okay, and obviously the target of this was four. Um, obviously, you met it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, out of 36 dice, we have three, three, two, and one. So, six, eight, nine successes. So, a five point exceed. Okay. Uh, I guess if BB initiated the team attack, does BB get to decide where the exceed points go? Or does everybody get to decide that? Um, I think we're in a team, so I would say maybe we just discuss where we want them to go. Yeah, so you guys can talk about like where you want your your five exceed points to go. <laughs> Good God. Um, I mean, we could give it to all of ourselves again and keep ourselves at the same heart rate yeah <laughs> so you can do another team move and do we know does bb see the change that's starting to happen with lacy i think at this point yeah your analysis is like full blown up right now so you can see oh, like absolutely everything um, i think we should just give all five to lacy then <laughs> um yeah, if it means that we could save Lacey. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe hold on to that hold 10. on to that heart re- that exceed for a second there and we'll we'll deploy it when it's narratively <laughs> appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, so that's our plan is to save Lacey. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Although I should check with Dana first, because like do you want them to save you like basically immediately? I I kind of wanted for that to last a little bit. Okay, we can just spread it between mm-hmm. us, ourselves. Yeah. Mm. yeah, maybe you can give like four, one to each of you, and then you could still give one to Lacey to push her closer to being saved. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And then we all still have a sync power. Yeah. So I'm. we're all at eight now then, right? Except yeah. for Lacey. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, Why don't y'all take turns describing what kind of cool shit you do as you fight all these, like, rad Halloween monsters? Yeah, so I think, like, for BB is definitely going to be aiming for the source of it all, and that's kind of how they identified the weaknesses as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be near that same, like, soft pumpkin spot that Monroe identified before and is now probably, like... It's got that cool, like, glowing purple light streaming from it, like a broken piece of glitch coming out of its head. Awesome. So that you know that that's the spot on the boss that you're supposed to hit. (laughs) And Zuka's aiming for the main boss as well, and it's kind of like striking um, with his sword at the spots that are being highlighted. Every so often he'll like back up and turn to slash at one of the little minions that are coming after him as well. And I think because everyone knows this, in the, the first movie that came out, the theatre release, um, Monroe and Cold became very good friends in my living blazer. So every time it seemed like they're about to get hit by one of these minions or by the main big bad, my living blazer would like pull them out of the way or take the hit for them. It's very much like a Doctor Strange's cloak kind of deal with yeah. it whipping around and dragging and Love taking it. hits and blocking shielding people. And yeah, every so often you see like um, when the, he needs to s- switch places, he kind of like chuck his sword up in the air, and his, his blazer would come and take the sword and do um, deal the strikes him- himself while he's dealing with someone else, and then it'll switch back again. Sick. 
Meanwhile, I think Monroe is just like in a flurry of these skulls and just like all the other minions too. But I primarily am imagining the skulls and her just like whipping around like lightning speed, throwing punches, probably even throwing a couple of kicks here and there, just like one on one with these skulls that are just like swooping in from all over. I think you, you, you might even get like some of those like bowling ball sound effects as you knock them into each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, 100% absolutely. Um, <laughs> this is also me shouting out the skulls in Hades. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. I was like, hmm, this sounds personal. Why skulls specifically? Because <laughs> the skulls in Hades suck. <laughs> and I'm imagining they do the same thing where they're floating and then they pull back and they charge right at you, but when the girl's already there, boom. Yeah. Suck it to him. Cole is still flat on the ground from where he was uh, attacked, but since the Living Blaze is just grabbing him by the ankle and dragging him away from danger, it just stays laying down and starts shredding on the base. And I, I know I said I was gonna use the Midas Shuriken, but I'm gonna use the Explosive Rigs. Sure. Mark it down. Same difference. So it just shreds on the base and the ground erupts under the mass of minions. Dispersing nice. them and crushing them. Yeah, you get a bunch that burst into mist. Some of those like scarecrow things burst into like piles of straw. And you probably like shake some of the like actual main boss as well, like shake its footing so that it looks unsteady. Perfect. Alright, and has anyone in this group not gone yet? Yeah, that's everyone. Okay. In that case, um, what you up to, Lacey? So <sighs> Lacey is starting to look like she's glitching out like a TV set. I think at this point she would have let go of Marlena's hand and taken a step or two away and she's hit by lightning and when the bright flash disappears her outfit has changed. It's purple but it's also um, it's basically the jacket from Thriller but with the, the like diagonal black Ooh. stripes but uh, purple instead of red and her hair has turned purple as well and is sticking straight up and back like, you know, like someone that's been electrocuted or like uh, live wire from Superman, you know? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And her two stun batons have, um, I don't know what they're, what they're actually called, but the, the like, you know, a lot of electricity themed characters have these like pylons it's like a pole with rings going up to a ball on the top oh yeah oh yeah something like that so she's they're, they're more the size of swords instead of batons and she now has the additional fighting style of bolts of electricity nice also maybe this is the main selling point of going to see this movie in the theaters because like maybe other characters in the cast have shown their heartbroken forms before but this is the first time Lacey's had her heartbroken form in the series. Hmm? Big um hmm. wicked lady vibes. Love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think she like appears in front of the rest of the group and says you you all think that I don't know anything and I, and I can't take care of myself. Well, I'll show you all. I'll take care of all of you. Wait, Lacey, what, did, what happened to you? This, this, this isn't you. Oh, uh, this ain't good. Oh, no. This, like, big boss is starting to fall at this point because you're just all out assaulting it and you're hitting its weak point and it's starting to, like, come crashing down. The minions are bursting into mist and finally the big boss starts to collapse into, like, its own pile of, like, purple goo that is spreading everywhere, but I think the goo is starting to slither over in Lacey's direction so that, Lacey, you're gonna be able to control this with your electricity powers, all this, like, purple energy. I point one of my pylon swords at it and a, an electrical bolt shoots out and some more of these cats appear, but their pumpkin heads are green instead of orange and they all have metal bolts sticking out of their necks now. Ooh, Ooh. like Franken cats. Yes, they're now Franken cats. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And I turn it back at the rest of the group and I start firing using my two pylon swords to, uh, 
I mean, you, you've got to have the shot of like explosions happening in front of the group and they all get knocked back. Whether or not that actually does any harm, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody okay with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so too. I, Marlena definitely gets blown back as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, for goodness sakes, this was my good shot. <laughs> okay, what are we going to do? We have to get Lacey back. BB is, of course, typing very quickly, trying to scan Lacey to search for weaknesses that won't hurt her, but also very nervous. Heart rate's really going because we're eight out of ten. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, if anything, BB will say, that's not anything unusual. You always take care of us. Aww. Now it's our turn, and uh, everyone aim here, <laughs> I guess. I don't know how to say tech stuff. <laughs> also, just to, to say, like, because I don't think I've said um, for the mic yet, uh, your total number of successes, uh, you've rolled how many, oh god, how many dice is this? 20, 28, 36 again. <laughs> Uh, so you rolled one, four, nine, thirteen successes. <laughs> so you rolled a nine exceed. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I forgot this is... I th I'm pretty sure like the team attack still goes, but this is uh, PvP, so I should roll two and use that as the target. Pretty oh, sure. True. Yes, it is. I will not Technically get it is. that many, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many dice do you get to roll? <laughs> Uh, seven, because that's my heart rate. Yeah. And well, you can invoke an aspect too if you want. I think I have the heartbroken aspect. Yeah, I'm going to invoke the, the bolts of electricity since that's what I'm using. Sure. <laughs> two successes. <laughs> yeah, <you got> two. <laughs> Solid try. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> my heart wasn't in it. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, just. All right. Just wait. <laughs> I'm going to use my poised swordsmanship fighting style as I'm trying to, I was just say I'm trying to deflect these things that Lacey's most likely sending our way as we're trying to talk to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just calmly deflect as you speak. Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody else invoking an aspect or a, or a special move as they do this? I'm going to use stubborn determination because I'm just uh, walking towards her and like she's zapping me and I take it and I keep talking. Nice. And for me to see like the, he kind of runs his hand across the blade of his katana and the newspaper and magazines that kind of covered up the blade dissolve and disappear. And like for the first time he's actually using the sharp end of his blade as he's striking down these hits that are legitimately pretty hard for him to deflect. I think he's seen him given the ground a few times, but he keeps just like cold, keeps walking towards Lacey and talking. Mm. Lacey, don't you remember? Just a couple of months ago in Las, Las Vegas, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have made it out of there. We had each other's back and we're going to continue to do that, Lacey. Please come back. I think for BB, they think back to the time in like the break room at the record store, which is really just a... Uh, basically a closet. You know, it's a small record store. There's not a lot of room in there. But Cole did manage to make a little tiny spot in the back for a break room for everyone. And there's a scene flashback where the first time the Siberia line came in, they came up with it together. And uh, <laughs> BB says, I really fucking hate that line, but people really respond to it. And I think if it weren't for you... Cole would probably never get any real accounting done. So, like, please come back. And then in between this, um, BB is shooting, like, bright purple lasers versus Lacey's currently dark purple. Mm -hmm. I think it's a uh, two-team sort of a situation. Like, Lacey's in the middle, obviously, like, making attacks here and there or whatever her creatures are, if you will. So I think it's like a mix of like back and forth between Monroe and Azuka, like just trading blows all the way around. And Monroe kind of just like dodges out and is just like, come on, Lacey, like if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't all be friends. 
and we get this like flashback to the first time Monroe was wandering around the center and I think like the coffee shop she works at is obviously like towards the front so it took a lot of time for her to wander back to where Siberia is and you know the second she walked through the door it was Lacey there who was like oh hi welcome and so I think that's the little flash we get scattered with like little moments of the two of them like joking around or talking about music or just like anything really about like the things that maybe Lacey knows about that Monroe doesn't and yeah just a little bonding times come on kid you're the only reason I'm still in business <laughs> people love you everybody loves you and, and you're you have a good heart you're you're usually the one who's got a lick of sense you're the one who got me to swallow my pride and, uh, and apply for that loan. I get a flashback of uh, Lacey helping Cole tie his tie right before the meeting <laughs> with the bank. Just saying something like, just remember, if, if you believe in yourself, they'll believe in you. Wait, this is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> flashback to Las Vegas, you just see the lights, you know. Classic Las Vegas and you just see the pink sparks and electricity of Lacey running and on her shoulders like a bleeding out and injured Azuka. Um, he's just barely, barely clinging on to um, life and you see some creature chasing them down and Lacey just, just barely managing to get Azuka out of harm's way um, and then flashes back to the present day. And I think, uh, Lacey, just before you get your reaction in here, I mm -hmm. think before you speak, you feel arms wrapping around you from behind, uh, arms across your front from Marlena, giving you a hug from behind, saying, I don't, I don't know you that well yet, but I believed you when you said everything was going to be okay. And... I don't get that feeling very often. And just please come back to us. I think Lacey's been like, you know, these, these Frank and Cat minions have been, have, have continued to attack, but the, the bolts of electricity have gotten less, um, less frequent as, as she's, she's sort of slowed down and lost her enthusiasm for attacking. And when she feels the arms wrap around her, she stops drops the pylons and starts to cry again and she says I I'm sorry I just you, you all you all do so much I wanted I I didn't want to feel like I was just useless dead weight but I'm really glad I could help all of you and there's another bolt of electricity which doesn't harm Marlena at all, but returns Lacey to normal and she drops to her knees. And I think as you do, that purple energy starts to fade and the barrier dimension around you is starting to fade around you as well as you're starting to fade back into the regular world, thankfully in an area where there aren't as many people. I think because we said you were near the edge of the barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For listeners, when someone who's heartbroken uh, has their heart rate go over 10 again, then they purge the infecting pulse and return to normal. Yeah. And <laughs> I assume we're using your your 9 exceed. <laughs> I guess, how does that spread work out? <laughs> they would have been like 5 to bring you from 6 to 11 and then maybe spread the remaining 4 amongst the, the other 4 of you to bring you like back down to 7 or something. Yeah. I think my living blazer, just before the barrier completely dissolves, goes over um, Lacey's shoulders to keep her warm Aww. and it's then goes inanimate now that people are watching <laughs> and we're back in a not real world. <laughs> yeah, I think thankfully not a lot of people are paying attention to you. They're still paying attention to those, those sweet licks from the, the midnight crisis. <laughs> Lacey stands up and says, thank you, everyone. I'm, I don't know what came over me, but moment there i really thought it was curtains for me we never let that happen to you come on we're a team right yeah can't let a kid get on 
hurt under my watch anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. Baby comes back from like floating in the air and now that the danger's all gone, the digital stuff just kind of melts back away and they take their headphones down. We should probably catch the last of the concert. That's a good point, actually. I, I need to meet up with my co-worker still. She might have thought I ditched her. Oh, it's a her. Oh. Why does that make it any different? It could easily have been a him. You, you've got to introduce us. Does she have friends? Yeah, yeah. I really want to see the show now. You should all accompany Miss Blanchett to the show. I think I will meet my, my friend on my own. Are you embarrassed of us or something? Absolutely. <laughs> That's fair. And BB just takes um, Marlena and goes to watch the show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think we get an ending montage of everybody at the, the show in whatever spots they want to be in for it. Uh, what do you think everybody sees in your like ending uh, freeze frame for your character? Phoebe is with Marlena in the front row. Once again, people just move aside when they walk <laughs> when they walk in and they get back to the front row and they're actually like just jumping and moshing and having a good time. Oh. And uh, Bibi's yeah. actually has a facial expression and is enjoying the show. And <laughs> even though it's obvious with the t-shirt that they're wearing, they're a huge fan. Yeah, and Marlena's not holding back anymore. She's having a great time. Um, I think Monroe went with y'all because like, sounds like a good time, sounds like a party. And there's music. Anywhere there's music, I'm going to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just doing like coordinated headbanging now. <laughs> oh yeah, Cole is absolutely headbanging. <laughs> Are you in there with them? Yeah, a little bit to the side. Don't have the knees for marsh pit anymore, but... Yeah. Do you have more cheese fries? Yeah, no, we, we find out that, hey, I have some in my pockets all along. <laughs> oh god, that's horrifying. <laughs> Lacey, like, goes to get drinks for herself and Marlena, like, she promised to, but also gets some corn dogs. But as she's walking back, she sees, like, a stray cat that looks like, you know, a more normal version of the weird pumpkin cats that we saw before. She sees the stray cat and bends down and gives it the corn dog and it takes it and runs away. <laughs> I think for Zuko, you kind of see it starts off with him very put together with his co-worker. He's the only one in a suit. His co-worker is very much in like the same kind of tea as BB and Marlena. They have the same tea because they're big fans of um, Midnight Crisis. And as the night goes on, you see Azuka become more and more into the band. Like he kind of like undoes his tie, his top button, eventually takes off his... Um, he's not even wearing his blazer, so that's a sure thing. So he's already a part way there. Um, and by the end, he's like in the mosh pit as well, <laughs> letting loose, head banging. Yeah, maybe the final, final freeze frame is everybody in the mosh pit together, just having a great time. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That was awesome. I can't believe I haven't watched this movie before. Yeah, that was pretty fun. I really like the hacker, BB. They were really cool and kind of funny too. Oh my god, and Azuka is absolutely my best boy. Did you see his sword and, and the blazer? He's so cool. Oh my god. Yeah, I guess he was cool or whatever. I mean, it was all right. Monroe was neat, kind of. She had good taste in music, at least. I kind of want to know more about Cole. He comes off at this big slob, but it seemed like there was a lot more going on for him that I let on. Oh, you'll love the rest of the series if you want more of that. Season 2 really digs into a lot more of Cole's backstory, and he's hey, like- Hey! Spoilers! I... I mean, it's just common courtesy. I know not all of you nerds have seen it, or whatever. You know, of all the Cyber Idols movies, this one is my favorite. Lacey's inner conflict is really heartbreaking, and seeing her friends help her through it is really sweet. Even if you haven't seen the anime, I feel like you get a strong sense of her character, and you really feel for her and everyone else by the end. I'm, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. Thanks for showing it to us, Valerie. It was a really good time. Yeah, this was a really good suggestion. I'd be down to watch more of this with everyone sometime if people are up for it. 
Oh, you remember when they talked about Vegas? So much happens in the Vegas OVA. Mmm, and that one's a Christmas story too. Maybe we can get together and watch it over the holidays? Yes, perfect. Yeah, I think I'd like that. That'd be great. I'm sure I can squeeze it into my schedule. Lucia, you don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, it's kind of fun just watching stuff with y'all. Even if you want to keep watching this weird show, I... Yeah, okay, whatever. I guess I'd be okay with that, sure. Alrighty then, I think it's a date. Next time, Cyber Idols, the OVA, Christmas in Vegas. Be there. At my house. Probably a bit before or after actual Christmas. I don't know what your holiday schedules are like. Yay. Thank you so much for listening to today's special presentation of Cyber Idols the Movie 3, Halloween Crisis. And thanks to the wonderful cast of today's one-shot. Lacey was played by Dana Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Bibi was played by T. Azuka was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Cole was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at QueenBE15160871. Monroe was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. Main show cleanup, editing, mastering, music, and sound effects were done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, bumpers, and finalization for this episode were done by me, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This one shot is played using Heartbeats in Perfect Sync, written by Nathan Blades, available at sixofspades.itch.io. The opening theme of Cyber Idols is Dead Ball by Ronan McQuillan, and the ending theme is Waiting for the Sunrise by Angela Hernandez. Both of these tracks are under license from Storyblocks.com. Cole's obnoxious Italian punk is Import Export, a Creative Commons track by Roz Cole. Other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.